Within the quiet tapestry of a tropical forest, a silent war unfolds beneath our feet. Unseen by most, entire civilizations rise and fall, locked in relentless struggle. Today, we turn our gaze downward, into the leaf litter and tangled roots, to witness a conflict as old as life itself, a battle between two rival ant colonies. Ants are among the most successful creatures on Earth. With over 12,000 known species, they've colonized nearly every continent, forging complex societies and highly coordinated armies. They communicate via intricate chemical signals and work together with a discipline that humbles human armies. It is here, on a battlefield of twigs and fallen leaves, that we find their martial prowess at its most stunning and brutal. In this story, we follow two colonies, the bold red army ants and their steadfast neighbors, the black shield ants. Both covet a rich feeding ground at the edge of a dried stream bed. As resources diminish, the tension between these two empires has grown sharp. Today, their scouts clash. Tomorrow, their warriors march to war. The battleground rests in a humid, lowland rainforest. The floor is a mosaic of decaying leaves, twigs, and mosses. Shafts of sunlight pierce through the canopy, illuminating secret trails known only to these tiny combatants. Beneath layers of leaf litter, complex tunnels and chambers form the heart of each colony's domain. The Red Army Ants, known scientifically as Formica rubra, have established a nest near the exposed roots of a towering tree. They are aggressive and expansionist. Their workers are medium-sized, their bodies tinted a reddish hue, and their mandibles strong enough to cut through the toughest insect exoskeletons. Across a small clearing, the black shield ants, Crematogaster species, hold territory. They are smaller, sleeker, their bodies a glossy black. They rely on chemical defenses, arching their gasters to emit noxious substances when threatened. Their nest is hidden in a rotting log, fortified by resin and sealed tunnels. Both colonies have flourished until now, but a recent drought has reduced available food. Aphid farms have shrunk, and the sweet sap flows are drying. Scouts from each colony have encountered one another with increasing hostility. The leaders sense that a major confrontation is inevitable. To understand this brewing war, we must first appreciate the sophistication of ant society. Both the Red Army and the Black Shield ants live in colonies ruled by a queen whose primary duty is egg-laying. Worker ants care for brood, maintain the nest, and forage for food. Soldiers, often larger or more powerfully built, stand ready to defend the colony or lead assaults on rivals. Communication is key. Ants secrete pheromones, chemical signals, to mark trails, raise alarms, and coordinate attacks. With a single scent, they can summon reinforcements, signal danger, or direct their sisters to a hidden source of nourishment. Their cooperation allows them to achieve feats unimaginable to lone insects. They can form living bridges across gaps, dismember much larger prey, or collectively repel enemies many times their size. In the coming battle, these sophisticated tactics will be tested to the limit. In the early morning, a Red Army scout stumbles upon a rich cluster of scale insects feeding on a vine sap. She gathers her precious droplets and, eager to claim this treasure, leaves a pheromone trail back to her colony. But unbeknownst to her, a Black Shield scout has also found this feeding ground. When these two meet, antennae flare and mandibles snap. The encounter is brief but vicious. The Black Shield ant, smaller but more agile, dodges the Red Army scout's attacks. Yet the Red Army ant, unwilling to cede this prize, calls for backup with a burst of alarm pheromone. Soon, reinforcements from both sides arrive. The small skirmish escalates, leaving the forest floor sprinkled with the bodies of fallen warriors. This clash at the resource site is the final spark needed. Both colonies now recognize that their adversaries will not withdraw. The time for subtlety has passed. Plans form within the secret halls of each nest. By midday, the Red Army ants mobilize a raiding party, while the Black Shield ants bolster their perimeter defenses. The Red Army ants march in a column, guided by pheromone trails. Hundreds of workers and soldiers move with singular purpose. Their objective, 
breached the Black Shield Ants territory and seized control of the feeding zone. They rely on brute force, their superior numbers, and sharp mandibles. Meanwhile, the Black Shield Ants spread out in a defensive pattern. They position ambush parties behind leaves and twigs, ready to pounce from surprise angles. They coat strategic trails with chemicals that confuse enemy pheromone signals. Their aim is to fragment the Red Army column and pick them off in smaller groups. As the sunlight grows warmer, both sides inch closer. Each ant is a tiny soldier in a grand conflict, fueled by instincts as old as the forest itself. The anticipation is palpable. The Red Army column reaches the threshold of Black Shield territory. Here, the ground is a battlefield of miniature proportions. The first Red Army ants press forward, mandibles wide, while Black Shield defenders dart in and out, biting and releasing chemical sprays. In moments, the scene is chaotic. Clusters of ants grapple in life-or-death struggles. Red Army soldiers try to decapitate their opponents with crushing jaws, while Black Shield ants retaliate by swarming over lone enemies, overwhelming them with numbers and stinging bites. Chemical secretions fill the air with signals of alarm and fury. Amidst the struggle, the Black Shield ants strategically retreat to lure Red Army invaders into hazardous terrain, areas littered with sharp twigs and sticky resins. Some Red Army ants lose their footing and become easy prey. Others press on, determined to push deeper. As the conflict intensifies, both colonies adapt their strategies. The Red Army, sensing that frontal assaults are costly, dispatches flanking parties. They circle around, attempting to cut off the Black Shield ants from their nest entrance. The Black Shield ants respond by using their chemical arsenal more cleverly. They lay misleading pheromone trails, diverting Red Army squads into dead ends. They position small groups on elevated leaves, dropping onto attackers from above. Each moment demands split-second decisions guided by scent and instinct. This is not mere chaos. It is a finely tuned ballet of aggression, defense, and deception. The forest floor, though quiet to human ears, is alive with the sound and scent of warfare. Ant bodies litter the ground, a testament to the lethal cost of territorial ambition. After hours of grinding conflict, the Red Army ants unleash their strongest soldiers, larger individuals with powerful mandibles designed to crush enemy exoskeletons. They drive a wedge through the Black Shield's defensive line. For a moment, it appears the Red Army might break through and claim the valuable feeding zone. But the Black Shield ants have not yet played all their cards. Suddenly, hidden reinforcements pour forth from their nest, rushing to the front lines. Using their chemical sprays effectively, they create a noxious barrier. Some Red Army ants reel in confusion as their pheromone trails are obscured, losing coordination. The Black Shield ants seize this moment to counterattack, pushing the intruders back inch by inch. It's a desperate struggle for each side's survival. Neither colony can afford to lose too many workers. The forest floor becomes a tapestry of conflict, legs tangled, mandibles locked, abdomens ruptured. Each life lost matters. As the sun dips low, fatigue sets in. Both sides have suffered heavy losses. The Red Army ants, frustrated by unexpected resistance and clever tactics, begin a slow withdrawal. They drag their wounded and salvage what they can. The Black Shield ants, triumphant in defense, do not pursue far. They too must recover, tend to their injured, and repair their damaged nest entrances. No treaties are signed, no terms negotiated. In the world of ants, victory and defeat are measured simply by who holds the ground at the end of the day. The feeding zone remains under the Black Shield's control, at least for now. But this outcome is never permanent. Tomorrow or next season, changes in weather or availability of resources may shift the balance of power again. Ant warfare, like all natural struggles, is in constant flux. What we have witnessed is but one skirmish in a world teeming with countless others. Ants are not driven by malice or honor. They fight because competition and cooperation are the twin engines of life's complexity. 
Through conflict, they secure resources and ensure their colony's survival. This battle in the underbrush reminds us that even at the smallest scales, nature is dynamic, intense, and evolving. The forests stand quiet to the human ear, but beneath each leaf lies a drama of epic proportions. As we rise back to our own world, let us remember that heroes and villains are human concepts. Here, there are only instincts, adaptations, and the relentless pursuit of survival. The ants continue their timeless dance of war and peace, weaving an intricate tapestry of life unseen beneath our feet. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your support keeps these tales alive and thriving.